Okay, welcome back guys. This is the second last session for today. Um, we're going to have Shetlana that's going to talk to us about Kotlin coroutines. I hope everyone enjoys. Please welcome her to the stage. Now it works? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Uh, at first, uh, the most important information for uh, if you are late, I have stickers. <laughs> so if you want, you can gather them after the talk. Uh, so, my name is Svetlana Sakova. I'm from JetBrains. I'm a developer advocate now for Kotlin. And today I'm going to talk about the next big feature, the next big thing in Kotlin, which is called coroutines. Uh, coroutines is the key new feature in the latest Kotlin release, and its goal is to simplify synchronous programming. I'm going to ask here who already has heard about coroutines, read about coroutines, or tried them. Oh, that's great. So uh, I would say that probably half of you. I'm sorry because uh, this talk is very introduction talk to the idea of coroutines. So probably you will find uh, everything that you know already. But still, I have nice, nice pictures and I will explain you their uh, like main motivation, main, main goal of why we find it important that we have now these coroutines. Uh, so the uh, the term, the exact term, wasn't invented for, uh, uh, for us by the Kotlin team. It was known uh, for a long time already. Uh, so it was invented in the 50s, and uh, at that time, before uh, actually multi-threaded uh, environment, multi-threaded operating system appeared, it was used to model asynchronous programming. It, it, it was used to model the situation when we want parts of our program to interoperate and call each other. And first we'll start with motivation, and first we'll, we'll discuss the concept of a single weight before going deeper into coroutines and what the coroutine is. So, uh, to illustrate you uh, why we uh, at all might be interested in something new for synchronous programming, let's uh, look at this very simple example, very simple piece of code uh, that is uh, very clear but wrong. Because we now we uh, call a time-consuming operation, probably time-consuming operation, on a main thread, and uh, theref therefore we might block our user. So this is not the right, th the right way how to write this code. We want different solutions, and uh, one uh, and like uh, the big group of solutions that solve this problem would be using callbacks. So now instead of writing uh, consequently, like do this and uh, after that do the next thing, we uh, extract the rest of our code in a callback and uh, just say when our operation completes, do this. I think that you should be very familiar with these examples, with this understanding. And the first uh, thing, the first way uh, how to do, uh, how to think about coroutines is that uh, they allow you to rewrite this code without callbacks. So, for instance, we can use a sync await to implement the similar logic. And you may notice that it looks very similar to the first but wrong example that we had before. So you see that now I haven't yet explained how a sync await works. It just the first uh, the first way how to think about what the coroutines are. Uh, but uh, and uh, this way is to think that now they allow us to eliminate callbacks to eliminate the necessity to extract different pieces of our code into different callbacks. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, a sync await is, uh, is functionality, is the feature that is already <coughs> available in different languages. For instance, if some of you have C Sharp experience, you know that there they have the similar feature, the similar functionality. However, in C Sharp, this, they have a sync and a wait as keywords, as keywords built as a part of the language syntax. In Kotlin, in, uh, a sync and wait, they look like regular functions, and they indeed are just regular functions defined in the library. So now we somehow we provide the same thing, we implement the same thing as a, a sync and wait in C Sharp, which 
uh, actually, which proved to be useful and convenient to use already in a different language. So now we implement this in our language in Kotlin. However, we do it on a different level. So again, in C sharp, I think await as is something built in in language. Now we have a support for coroutines on the in the language itself, and on top of that, we have a sync await as library functionality. So that's the difference with C sharp approach. And now is the right time to discuss what actually the coroutine is and how it's uh, how we should think about it and what, what how to define it. <clears throat> and uh, now I want to discuss. Uh, I want to compare threads and coroutines, and I want to discuss what uh, are similarities between thread and a coroutine, and what is and what is the difference between thread and coroutines. First, let's start with uh, similarity. So, coroutine is very is ve very similar concept to a thread. So, when you think about coroutine, you may think of it as like as a, you think of a thread. In which sense? So, it's not a definition of thread. It's more like a description. So, a thread is just a sequence of instruction, uh, and multiple threads can be executed concurrently and share some resources. And the same, absolutely the same, works for coroutines as well. So uh, the same description applies to coroutine. In this sense, they are very similar. So it's also just a sequence of instructions, and somehow several coroutines might be run in parallel and might, and, uh, might say share some resources. However, coroutine is much more lightweight than thread. So in your program, you can create much more coroutines than threads. Thread takes from two to three megabytes of memory. Coroutines is just hundreds of kilobytes. So you, uh, so it gives you much more power of creating much more coroutines in your application. Now then, it's time to discuss difference between coroutines and threads, and why if we have threads already, we need one more concept. So, uh, the next way to think about coroutines, to think about what a coroutine is, is uh, that coroutine is a computation that can be suspended. And I will, uh, during the rest of my talk, I've uh, promised you pictures, and. Uh, during the rest of my talk, I will use the following notation. Thread will be marked as a, illustrated as a line and coroutine as a block of, uh, as a block. Uh, oh, sorry, no, no, not coroutine, but, but just a general computation will be illustrated as a block on this, on this line. And when I say that coroutine is a computation that can be suspended, on this picture I can illustrate it like this. So somehow we can take our computation that is run on a thread and put it away somewhere, somehow. We'll discuss the details a bit later. For now we might be very interested, like, why suspend? Why would we possibly want to suspend this computation, to put it, to take it and put away from, from a thread? And uh, to answer this question, at first I want to discuss the question, how, would, how can we do asynchronous uh, computations in general? And uh, the first very naive approach would be, so, like, Let's step back and try to to uh, to to think about how a synchronous computation can be possibly implemented, can be possibly done nowadays. So yes, the first very naive approach would be to create a new thread for every computation. It is very simple, very straightforward, and probably some new developers sometimes for and yes, this pro uh, this. Uh, way works for prototyping for for some uh, for some situations when you do not really interested in uh, performance. So for some situations, this approach still works, and uh, you may you may try, and uh, some new developers may try this as well. However, it's too expensive, and uh, actually Java and now. For Android, as I think if you use Rux, you have the similar concept. We we have executor. So what what was the problems with uh, the previous approach? Threads are expensive. It is expensive to start a new thread, to create one, to kill one, to create a new one instead. It's it's just a lot of resources. So now instead we would like to reuse threads. 
So executor, what 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 in essence is executor? Executor is it, it is uh, something that manip that has fixed number of threads, manipulates them, and allows you to add new computations there, and uh, run computations there, and it takes care of um, manipulating these a lot of computations for you. So now the number of, of computations might be much more than threads, and we win. Great. However, the difficulty here is that it's hard to manage dependencies. If you want to say that, okay, my computation depends on the other computation, and now we want to express uh, by hand using executor, it's, it's, it's really difficult. So you have to invent something and it doesn't work like uh, from scratch. So for instance, if you have this simple computation that just starts like uh, this main blue, com blue computation, it starts two new computation, green and red, and it waits for their result. Uh, how would we uh, implement this logic via executors? And basically, uh, before Java 8, before Completable Futures, and before RxJava, it was really very difficult to do this. But now, with RxJava and Completable Futures, you just extract the rest of your computation in a callback. And uh, you, w for our example, you, you ex uh, we have this main blue computation. You extract the rest in a callback. And uh, into this callback, you wait until this green and red are finished, so uh, that when they finish, you can continue and uh, continue your main computation and uh, and run it on 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 your threads. That's great, that works, and uh, I would say that now is somehow the default way way to do to, to solve this task to do this. However, what if we step back and? Uh, discuss what was wrong actually with the first way to do this, when it was just a thread, when you started two new computations from the main computation in new threads, and just finished in a consecutive logic, just finished the result. The problem was that the, the thread was blocked when it was idle, when it was waiting for the results, and it, it is expensive when your thread does nothing. And if it is UI thread, and we're talking about Android, it's uh, much worse, because it's not only expensive, but your user is blocked, while your main computation expects for the result of two new computations. And uh, now you may... Uh, you see there you may see the strengths of uh, coroutines because now coroutines they are similar to threads so they can be used uh, instead of threads uh, but uh, they do not block thread when you uh, st when you try to express the same logic via coroutines so now you somehow uh, move the same consecutive logic, you express it using coroutines, and um, uh, now instead of blocking thread, you, you suspend the computation. So you see you started these new computations, green and red, and uh, you suspend the blue one, so it is, it is the one computation. You do not have to, to extract it, uh, part of it into callback. You do not, want to, do not need to divide it. It's just a single computation that just awaits uh, the result. And now you suspend it and return it when the result is ready and your thread is not blocked. So this is the main motivation. So somehow routines allow, uh, allow us to write the similar code that we would write with just threads, but, but uh, the, with threads this code is wrong because threads are blocked, but with coroutines we write the similar code, but now it's not wrong because the threads are not blocked, instead coroutines uh, are suspended. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, in code, <coughs> uh, now uh, actually the only support uh, that Kotlin language itself introduces uh, for coroutines is the suspend modifier. So now you may mark your function as suspend or the library functions like await may be marked as suspend and that means uh, that this function is a computation that can be suspended. 
Uh, now let's uh, finally look at some code, because I just have some nice pictures, but uh, it's better to look at real code instead. And uh, let's, at first, let's understand what's going on in our first uh, image example that we had in the introduction. So we have two functions a load for loading image and for processing image. And uh, load image, a sync now uh, calls a sync. And what a sync does is it starts a new computation. So when you run, when you call this function, it somehow starts a new computation on a new thread. Or, on a, or not on a new thread, but on some existing thread. So we will a bit later discuss how these threads can be chosen, but for now it's enough to think that, okay, a sync starts a new computation. And what await does? Await actually suspends computation. So await in this example is this marker that tells the compiler to take the computation and put it away. Uh, and if you look at how a uh, suspend function, oh, sorry, at how a wait function is declared in the library, you'll see that load image async just returns a special, uh, t uh, special deferred type. Actually, it is a synonym of promise of future. It's just uh, the, another word that uh, means the same concept. <coughs> And uh, uh, this deferred type has uh, suspend has a wait function as a member, and it is marked as suspend function. So for now, uh, for us, it's important that yes, a wait function is the function that su that actually suspends. Uh, so let's uh, step by step look at what's going on, and uh, <coughs> uh, to simplify everything, I will just extract this a result of load image async in a new variable. That actually what uh, the compiler does anyway. So now we have the deferred in a new variable and we're ready to, to look exactly, to, to see the correspondence between my nice images and real code. So as we all already know, load image async starts a new computation on, on new thread. And process image stores the reference to this new computation in a deferred. And then, when our computation reach, when our code reaches a wait call, a wait is a marker that says that this computation must be suspended. So now, when we reach a wait, uh, the calling compiler suspends this main blue computation until the result of another one is ready. So a wait is something that suspends computation. So by now you, uh, I don't know, you're probably very tired from the whole day of talks. So, or you know everything already. So you look at me like, when, when are you going to finish this? <laughs> I don't know, or you're from Norway, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's the, what's the answer. So anyway, uh, we, uh, we now you see this correspondence between my uh, images with uh, threads, with lines and blocks, and th the real code that uses async await and suspend functions. And uh, await suspends computation. So await is the mar uh, something that instructs the compiler to actually put this computation aside, put it somewhere, and also it continues this computation when the result is ready. So uh, in this, in our, in my image, when image, in my, when load image uh, finishes, uh, when it returns the result, when the result is available, we can return our suspended blue computation, return it to our executor, to our threads, and continue to execute it. You may ask uh, here, on which thread this suspended computation? might be continued. And the answer will be that you actually can specify that. Uh, so uh, you can say that you can pass uh, the argument to the async function that says which, uh, 
uh, how this computation should be started and suspended. If the argument would be common pool, it's, uh, then it means that you have, uh, there is actually one common pool defined, one constant common pool defined for your, for your system, for your application. It uh, manipulates a number of threads that depends on the course in, on, of your system. And um, that means that if the computation was suspended, it can be continued on every thread on this uh, common pool. So uh, you can suspend computation and when you continue it, uh, you can continue it in any thread actually. So you do not have to continue it on the same thread. So it works uh, that uh, you uh, that whatever thread now is free, now is not busy with doing something else, the, it can uh, execute <laughs> this computation. Uh, with the latest release, when you say a sync without a parameter, that means actually the same as saying a sync common pool. And for the future, uh, this default uh, might change and um, a more uh, clever uh, executor might be, clever context might be provided. But for now, it's a common pool. If we're talking about Android, you may specify that you want to start your coroutine in the UI thread. You just provide this UI context, and that means that your coroutine might be started and, and continued after suspension only on the main thread. So if you, and uh, you see here that if your main UI thread was busy while our coroutine was suspended, then uh, uh, it will be uh, continued only when the thread is free. So now uh, we, we suspend this computation, but now we can, uh, we can do something else on this UI thread when our, main, when our computation is suspended. <coughs> Any questions? You can provide custom context, so the system is quite flexible. And if you want, if you need, you can provide custom context that specifies where your coroutines might be, uh, might be executed. Uh, then I will just, yeah? Uh, can it be uh, set to the at runtime, or does it have to be written at compile time, which, uh, which thread do you use? Say, say it again? Can it be dynamic? Can I say... Uh, yeah, actually, uh, this so uh, this context, this UI, it is just uh, a variable. So in this case, it's some construct defined in the library, but uh, you may store it in a variable, and you may change it while you execute your code. So you may change it depending on on, on your needs. So yeah, there, then uh, some general more facts about what can be done or what cannot be done without routines. Uh, with coroutines, for instance, uh, some, something that you might expect, that uh, suspension uh, might not actually happen if the result is already available. So if we, for instance, uh, here in this example, we started, in U, we started loading, loading an image, then we do something else. And uh, while we do something else, or the image is cached or something, the result is already available, then instead of awaiting, instead of suspending, we can just continue doing what we're doing. Uh, and uh, here uh, there is uh, an ex a code example illustrating my other picture with the two. Uh, with, two, with two computations that I start from the main blue one, so the, another image that I used to explain some uh, general concepts in the beginning. Uh, so in this example, we just, uh, we just start uh, a new computation and we want to load two images concurrently on two different threads. So we can just say load image of sync, load image of sync. We, can, uh, we, can ha we have new now two reference to this started computation somewhere. And now we can wait until both of them, both of images are loaded. And uh, after that, in this case, we try to overlay these two images. So you see now that uh, the code is rather sequential. 
So uh, I've uh, tried to explain in the beginning that now with this concept, with this uh, idea of suspending a computation, our goal is to, to be able to write the code as we would write it for the, for the threads in a consecutive manner, but with threads it's wrong, now with coroutines it works because coroutines are suspended instead of, instead of blocking threads. So this example illustrates this. <coughs> uh, There's another example uh, to, to show uh, the computation started on UI thread. So for instance, we can, we can uh, start launch, actually does similar thing to a sync. It starts coroutine. Uh, it starts, uh, it starts, it starts it in UI thread. Then uh, we, uh, inside this coroutine, we start a new coroutine by uh, saying uh, overlay a thing. So just lo loading our two images and awaiting it. And uh, until we, uh, like, w when we do this, our green main coroutine is suspended. The UI thread might be busy for doing something else. And then we return it to the main thread and continue. Uh, you may ask, what about exceptions? And the answer would be that uh, a way to th th throw the exception so regular try catch works. So again, your code looks like well, like a regular code, so it's uh, it um, it doesn't change. So you, you use all these try catch contracts, regular for loops, etc. Uh, so uh, for instance, here we have. Uh, we have an example when we throw exception in one coroutine in one thread, and we can catch it in the in another coroutine in another thread, and um, it just works. So you again you just you 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 write your code in a usual in a usual regular style. You can cancel the coroutine. Uh, however, you can you have to check explicitly. So you you, you so coroutine returns an object that, uh, on which you can say cancel. But to actually coroutine to be cancelled, you have to check inside the coroutine uh, its state. So you have to check uh, that it's still active. If you do some computation, some uh, some busy computation, if you, if you have some busy computational code right there in this coroutine. Uh, if you use, if you call a library functions like delay or await, they will uh, uh, they will check for cancellation for you. So this function, they just check whether the coroutine was cancelled or not. Uh, you can uh, you can say that uh, this part of code shouldn't be cancelled. For instance, in final block, and even if uh, you cancel the coroutine, this this part should be anyway be performed. Uh, so I'm mostly done with my introduction to to coroutines with uh, with uh, with uh, explanation of why it's important and uh, 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 and uh, what the coroutine is and how it's different and similar to thread. And now I want to I want to demonstrate you again the importance of them, and I want to demonstrate how coroutines change uh, the way how we write our code and also to demonstrate why Kotlin introduced suspend functions instead of supporting just a sync await. Because for now we have discussed only what a sync await does, how it's beneficial, how it works, but uh, Kotlin doesn't support a sync await, it supports coroutines. And we emphasize that, that, coroutines, uh, that, uh, that coroutines matter. And uh, uh, the answer is that the answer why why it's important that it's not just a sync await but suspend functions is that you may define your own suspend functions. So you may declare your own suspend functions that might be suspended, that might be uh, put away from this main executor, and that makes a difference. That makes um, that introduces a new way how we express how, how we express our synchronous computations. Let's look at an example. And here is an example of just simple consecutive logic. So we do uh, three things. At first, we, uh, we load user ID by some credentials. After that, we use this user ID to load user data. 
So we have to first lo lo the, to, to run uh, uh, login f first, and after that, at the last point, we show the data to the user. To the user, and here we have two places when our uh, when our user can be blocked, or the, uh, the two places that uh, that introduce a possible. Uh, like blocking, uh, so uh, there might be network operations or some I/O operation in general. So in here, uh, in, the, in this case, probably some network operation that might take a longer time. So we have uh, two functions: login and load user data that might introduce this this blocking. Uh, now we can we know already a sync await, and now we can rewrite this code with a sync await. And what, uh, how we do this? At first, uh, our logging and load user ID, uh, load user data, instead of returning just user ID, just result, and just user data, will return as deferred, will return as like a promise of this value, for this value. Uh, and uh, when we uh, write our code now, we, we change uh, the call for just logging function into logging dot await. So now we have another return type. We have deferred as a return type. Type so we have to call await on this. The same with load user data. We replace just calling this function with uh, we added this await function afterwards. And actually, this is how a sync await is used in C sharp. In C sharp. You have the similar sync await, and you have to always use there. In the in the in their case, it, it's it's called task. So we have to write your functions so that they would return task instead of uh, the result value that you're interested in. And um, that works for Kotlin as well. However, in Kotlin, we can do better. We can just uh, replace these functions that returned us promises or deferred with suspend functions. And now, instead of calling this await on every deferred type, we just call these suspend functions directly. And that's it. So if you compare this code with the wrong code above with threads, it's absolutely similar except the suspend functions. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate. We have this consecutive logic, we could write it with threads, it was wrong because threads are blocked. Now we have the same, we have the same way to express this consecutive logic. We just write our uh, calling one after another. We do not have something special. But now, instead of blocking threads, we, uh, all the dangerous places, they are, they, uh, in these places, our routine just can be suspended instead of blocking thread. And analogy uh, gives you uh, uh, this sign, this uh, error, that uh, illustrates every point when the computation might be suspended. So uh, this uh, symbol means that, OK, this, on this line, this line uh, calls some uh, another suspend function, and this point uh, he, here, the suspension might happen. You see every suspension point explicitly if you use ID. So yeah, so this is like the most important slide. This illustrates what uh, this illust this slide illustrates the power of coroutines, the power of suspension suspend functions. <coughs> Uh, now, uh, some other information about just susp suspend functions. For instance, where you can call suspend functions, and the answer would be in, in other suspend functions, right? In our previous example, we just called some different suspend functions from, uh, uh, from another suspend functions, and uh, in so called coroutine builders. So, a sync and launch are coroutine builders defined in the library. <clears throat> uh, the difference between a sync and launch is that a sync returns you 
uh, the promise of uh, ex uh, exact object of some specific type, while launch just uh, returns you, uh, is used when you are not interested in uh, any result, you just uh, want the, uh, like the unit as, as the result. Run blocking is coroutine builder that is used to uh, as an entry point into this coroutine's world from non-blocking environment. And uh, uh, here are declarations of async and, and launch. Again, async returns deferred of some t-type, while launch just returns your job that can be awaited or cancelled, but not, that the, not the one that returns you the result. And here you see another uh, suspend modifier in use. So Curtain Builder is the function that actually under the hood takes a, lambda, a suspend lambda as a parameter. So this is some internal implementation details. If you're interested, you may, inv you may investigate them. But important thing here is that you are, c are able to define your own coroutine builders as well. And the library authors are able to define their own coroutine builders that would be specific for their libraries. So we are not constrained with just a sync, with just launch. We can have as many coroutine builders as we need for our different environments. So I would say that probably you would just use the standard ones uh, and define your suspend functions. But nevertheless, for library authors, it, it is important. Uh, this is an example uh, we, sh we have we had similar one I think before, but still there is an example that illustrates you that coroutines can be nested, and actually what a coroutine is, uh, our coroutine builder builds and starts coroutine. So launch, a cr so in this example we ha we see two coroutines started. So launch starts the few cr the first coroutine, uh, which has. For, uh, which has three suspension points, login, load user data, and show image. And uh, in between, we want to uh, load image as well, but we want to load image asynchronously. And here, async also starts the second routine, which is started uh, in a common pool, not on the UI thread, because we don't want, this is long operation, we don't, do, do not want block our user. And we want to show data uh, when it's available. We do not want to, to, to wait for image. So now you see that the same code that probably you would uh, write, you'd have to write uh, differently, and or you, you would probably have to complicate to express the same idea now. It's rather simple as, and straightforward. Uh, some implementation details of how these suspend functions work, actually. Uh, so Kotlin compiler generates a secret hidden parameter for each suspend function that you declare uh, of uh, the type continuation. And in essence, continuation is just a generic callback interface. So uh, at first I told you that, yeah, now we don't have callbacks, you do not have to write callbacks, but under the hood, the Kotlin compiler uses the same callbacks approach, but it hides it from, from uh, the code that you write. It hides it somewhere in the compiler, uh, in the compiler magic. But uh, deeply, this uh, coroutine still uses the call uh, still uses the callbacks. Uh, coroutine is compiled, each coroutine is compiled to a state machine. Uh, I won't give you slide, uh, yeah, I, I uh, uh, give you a slide uh, that represents the exact code. So here general idea is enough. But if you are interested uh, in the Kotlin documentation, you can find uh, the example of how, uh, of uh, uh, so like a bytecode uh, that uh, is produced by compiling the coroutine. But uh, for us, it's uh, enough to think that when coroutine is suspended first time, it's suspended in the first state, then we return, then the next, at the next suspension point, when it's suspended, it is, it is stored in the second state, and, and, uh, and uh, etc. 
yeah, and uh, actually that means that only one object is created for each coroutine. So when you declare the coroutine with coroutine builder, like you say a sync, and then lots of lines of code, one object is created for this coroutine. Object that knows about the suspension points and that might be suspended and then restored to the, to, to the threads. Uh, now let's discuss how, how we combine, how we mix our regular world without coroutines and coroutines. At first, uh, there is a question, how do you think, is it possible to call suspend function from Java? I will drink at the time. Who is still alive? Uh, actually, we have. Uh, I, I've, I've already told you that for each suspend function, a co continuation parameter is uh, generated. So you basically you can theoretically call this function from Java, but then you will have to provide your own continuation. And uh, that's probably not what you want to do because it's hard to create your right continuation. So I would say that uh, it's it's not how how it is intended to be. However, if you want to use suspend functions from Java, what you need to do is just to wrap the result uh, into uh, some future. Depends on what dependency you have in your pro in your project. So if you have dependency on Java 8, you have completable future. You can wrap it into completable future. If you have a Rigs Java, you can wrap the result into a single. Uh, anyway, it works. Uh, it you need it if you for some reason want to call your suspend functions from Java. So uh, you have to just introduce this one line function, and uh, it will allow you to to mix two languages. Uh, another thing, uh, for instance, we now have lots of uh, third-party libraries that know nothing about coroutines, for sure, and uh, at least yet. And uh, you, but you would like to call them from and use them uh, you, uh, with coroutines. Uh, for this, uh, you can just wrap in the library, vice versa, in, a, in the library function, vice versa, into a suspend function. So you just uh, add another function, suspend, and uh, I wouldn't, I don't w want to go deep into details of implementation of this function, but the general idea is that you just use suspend coroutine library intrinsic function to wrap uh, your uh, third-party li uh, library function that uh, that API that uses callback. Now you wrap it into uh, into suspend function. So the general idea here is that now you can call, you can wrap uh, in this manner third-party functions into suspend functions and afterwards use them from Kotlin with coroutines. The same works, for instance, with Rix. Uh, however, with Rix you do not n n even need to do that. You can just use uh, extension await def already defined in the, into the library into the coroutine library, coroutine X library, so uh, you can just use uh, the same the same functionality with the Rix uh, single. Now uh, there is uh, I, I I expect that you should have question like what about a Rix? How it interoperates with coroutines? Because basically they uh, uh, like t uh, try to solve the same problem. They try to uh, to, to perform their solutions for performing asynchronous computations. And uh, to answer this, I would like to rewrite uh, this logic again, this example again, but now using, uh, using coroutines and, uh, 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 um, uh, I'm sorry, not coroutines, but now using Rx Java and uh, compatible features. So with, uh, uh, yes, this is solution with suspend functions that we already seen. Uh, this is solution with compatible future. So you see that now uh, you have to wrap your login and load data functions into 
so that they will return you promise, like in this case, completable future, not a uh, just object. And then you use uh, the regular style of uh, how you process the data to, to express the same thing. With RxJava, the, me the method names are different. So probably you already get used to flat map in this context. And, uh, but you still have to wrap uh, it into a single, uh, not, uh, and not just return the result directly. And what I'm kind of trying to illustrate by this example is uh, that Rx uh, isn't the best solution for lots, for some cases, especially when you just want to express simple consecutive logic. And uh, if you are in a situation when you try to think, uh, when you like Rx and you try to think hard how to use it in your application, it doesn't. It, so your application do does doesn't consist of a, like a list of observ observable, the source of observables and flowables, but you really want to uh, uh, try to find a way to use it. In this situation, uh, I would say that coroutines might help you to express the simple consecutive logic instead. But I do not try to say that coroutines should be used in all, in all circumstances instead of a, a reactive. And there are lots of cases when, uh, when Rx works better, there are lots of cases when coroutines works better, and there are some cases when you can either choose or even, cho or even uh, use both. And uh, for me, it's just something we uh, need to, uh, to, uh, to find as a community, like what are the, ca the best cases for Rx and what are the best cases for coroutines. Uh, and uh, I'm almost done. So uh, we are, I think, uh, a little bit over, but uh, it's just uh, some finishing information. At first, what I've showed you is just a single weight uh, built on top of coroutines, basically, and the basic concept of coroutines. But uh, Kotlin Coroutine X library is much more. It also contains channels, actors, and also yields. That is has nothing to do with asynchronous programming, but still uh, is nicely implemented using coroutines. So you may check that. Uh, for now, uh, coroutines are released in so-called experimental status, but uh, in fact, uh, they are ready, but we want to finalize the design by, uh, uh, by ensuring that it works fine, because this is a new way of writing code. This is uh, a modern approach, a different approach to express uh, lots of things. So we want to ensure that it works uh, before releasing the final uh, backwards compatible version. But still, it's already, and we really want the community to try it and to give us feedback uh, on whatever works and whatever doesn't work. I would say that what I <coughs> covered in this talk, this won't change because it's just basic things, but some more internal things, deep in the library, and uh, more uh, details about other aspects, they may change. But uh, what, I've, what I've shown you, that they're just very introduction, they're basic stuff, and that works, and they, they, it will continue to work <coughs> in the future. Yeah, and also uh, we uh, will provide migration aids. So for now, if you use this uh, experimental version, we'll provide migration aids and also support libraries so that if you use this version, your code will continue to work if you do not want to update or for some period you don't want to update, you'll uh, be able to use the support library. Uh, there is uh, the reference. There is a magnificent guide. Probably some of you have read it already. And I also want to mention that uh, Armand Lazarov is the person who stands behind the creating the library. Libraries. So if you uh, are more interested in internal details and how it works, just Google his talks, or, and uh, and uh, there will be one available after Kotlin Conf, Conf as well. Uh, so even if you don't go there, there will be recording available. And uh, yeah, there is the guide. And so I have to mention the book. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this book doesn't cover coroutine, uh, coroutines, but uh, probably will add some description in the future. We'll see. But it, it's about all the rest of Scotland <laughs> that you already used. So thank you a lot. Have a nice Scotland. <laughs>